What up folks, it's Alex here, I hope you're all good. Right in front of me here, I've got the brand new Apple MacBook Air M1. Now this is the 512 gigabyte model, which means it comes with the eight core GPU versus the seven core GPU you get on the base model. It's also got eight gigabytes of RAM and it's currently plugged into the wall. Not that that matters because it performs exactly the same on the battery, which I'll cover in another video. So I know there's a lot of interest in these running DaVinci Resolve. So what I'm gonna do is a real quick demonstration of the performance of this MacBook Air. Now, this is gonna be a pretty much unedited video. We're just gonna do it live. There'll be a few cuts here and there if I cough or do anything horrible, but generally I'm gonna show you all in real time without any cuts because I want you to see the real life, real time performance of it. I'm not here to convince you that it is the next generation of everything amazing about computers. I'm also not here to convince you that Windows is the best. I don't care about brand loyalty. I honestly could not care less. I use Windows because I like Windows, but I have nothing against Mac. This looked like a interesting proposition, so I bought one and I'm doing this demonstration. And that's a point to make. I did buy this. I bought this with my own cash. I have a laptop, Windows laptop, which I also bought a few months ago with my own money. One of them will be sold. I'm just gonna test them both out against each other to see which one works best for what I need and then I'll sell the one which comes in second place. So, so I am very interested and invested in all of these tests because I wanna know which one to keep. So we're gonna open DaVinci Resolve. It's DaVinci Resolve 17.1, which is the M1 optimized version. We're gonna start a new project, throw in some footage and I'll just show you that as a basis. And then I've exported two projects from my PC, imported it into here, and we can just have a look at how they run. I think I may turn the screen capture off when we're rendering the project out, just to give the laptop its you know, most optimum performance and give you the best demonstration of how it actually performs. So let's hit start recording. So there we go. You can now see the screen as well as me, and let's get to it. So we've got DaVinci Resolve. As I mentioned, this is DaVinci Resolve 17.1. First thing to notice, it boots really quick. It starts quicker than it does on my computer, um, which is interesting. And it does make it handy. You can jump straight into projects much quicker. We're also were working with the studio version rather than the free version. That is an important point as well. So let's go to this project. Go away. My watch is vibrating on me already, typical. So we're straight in there, nice and quick. Let's just go to my project settings. I'm gonna change this timeline to B 4K and change that to 25 because I work with 25 frames per second. Now we're also gonna to go to playback. We're gonna turn off any optimized media, turn off proxy, timeline proxy mode is staying as off, render cache is staying as none, and we don't have any footage, so I don't need to delete any render cache. So first things first, let's pick up some media. I'm gonna import this clip here. And this was shot on my Sony A7 III, so that means it's 8-bit 4K footage shot at 25 frames per second, and again, 25 frames per second timeline. So what I'm gonna do, drag it onto my timeline, release, and then look, we can scrub through that with no issues whatsoever, and then if we just hit play, it's happy as Larry. It's not skipping any frames, it's running at my full 25 frames per second, has no issues whatsoever. So let's just do that again. A different clip, we'll just drop that somewhere there. We'll hit play. Not a problem at all, we'll do a quick cut and we'll do a ripple delete. and it's having no issues at all with that. Now, don't get me wrong, that's nothing special for a, a laptop which costs over a grand. If it couldn't do that, I would be very annoyed for the price that you paid, but the fact that it's fanless and it's really small and light is still quite impressive. So, if we were to go to render that out, let's just go to render, we'll do, I'll leave the screen capture going for this one, H.264, we'll just do test, go to browse, well, yeah, movies, we'll do, QuickTime, H.264, 4K, 25 frames per second. Adds a render queue. This clip is about a minute long, or we'll render. Now, admittedly, we've not done anything to that, really, but it's coming out at about 50, 48, 50 frames per second. That is also with the screen capture software running as well, which is honestly not half bad.
Again, on a more powerful machine, you'd expect more than that, but for what it is, that's not too bad at all. If you were just cutting, so if you're looking for a machine to cut, so you're not planning on doing any real color grading on it, Fusion FX titles, you're just doing cutting, it is literally flawless. You can just drop 4K footage on there, cut it up, have no issues at all, and render it at about two odd times of, two-ish times real time in 4K. If we were to drop that to 1080p, which is actually more realistic for me, because I use 4K footage, I edit on a 1080p timeline, and then I export in 1080p. Let's just do test 10. That's a render key. Render that out. That then jumps up to about 60-ish frames. Now that's still a 4K timeline. We're just rendering it out at 1080p. Let's just stop that because you get the idea. Let's change the timeline resolution down to 1080p. And then we'll do 1080 again, untitled 2. Let's just go with add to render key. Well, I've already got that one. And it jumps up again to about 90 ish frames per second. Again, that's still with the screen capture software running in the background as well. So you might get a couple more frames out of that if you weren't running the screen capture. So, but that's not that interesting because we don't really have anything going on. So let's stop that. I'm going to open my project manager. And this time we're going to jump into the horror project. We won't save that. So here we are, we're on the edit tab. Let's zoom right out. This is about 15 minutes long total, but a big chunk of this is pre-rendered screen capture. So what I'm actually gonna do is just delete that because it's super easy to run. It'll run this, I've already tested on that, this thing will churn that out about 150, 160 frames per second. So it's not really that important to see. Now let's open my project manager. This is a 1080p timeline, but all the footage again is at 4K. So let's go right to the beginning and hit play. Here's some simple text, some 4K. You can see on this one, we've got quite a heavy, it's struggled there. We've got quite a heavy color grade. We've got a heavy vignette. We've also got an overlay and we've got some other visual effects going on. And at the minute, it is playing that back absolutely fine. This project had render cache on, so it's also rendering anything it needs to and it's having no issues playing any of that back whatsoever. In fact, it's now finished rendering it all, and it's pretty much flawless to go. Now, just to show you what's actually going on here, we've got this adjustment clip. If we go to effects, we've got camera shake on there, we've got flicker edition, and we've got the vignette. We've got this overlay, which I'll just disable. It's just an overlay which has been set with a composite mode of add just to add some dirt and grime to the screen as well. Then we've got a couple of layers of 4K. Some of them have been adjusted to run at 400% speed, so they're running faster than real time, which obviously chugs things up a little bit as well. And then if we click on one of the pieces of footage, go to the color tab. I was lazy, I did it all on one node, but we've got some color wheel changes going on and then a pretty significant change within the curves as well. Now ignore the font, I don't have the right fonts installed on here yet, but as you can see, that is having no problem at all playing back, and it's rendered the cache, and it's all good to go. I can jump through that, again, with no issues. Let's just make a cut there, we'll cut through all of it, cut through that, select, I don't need to select all of that, but never mind, we can just ripple delete that. And again, playing back in real time with no issues whatsoever. Now that is of course the 1080p timeline, but that is how I work. I do everything on a 1080p timeline, just use 4K footage. Let's go to the deliver tab. We are going to just call this one horror test. Browse, put that in movies. QuickTime, H.264, 1080p, 25 frames per second. Add to render queue, this is 50 minutes of footage, but as I say, it's got loads of effects and loads of different stuff going on, so we'll hit render. The first bit's coming out 17, 18 frames per second, 16. Now it's jumped up to 23, 24. 
it's jumping all over the place, as you'd expect, honestly, for 4K footage, multiple layers of 4K footage, some of which have been adjusted. There's audio effects in there as well. So I applied some pitch corrections to the audio. Everything is color graded and you've got an overlay running over the entire thing. And then you've also got three different visual effects running. As I mentioned, it was the camera movement, the flicker edition and a vignette. It barely feels warm. Yeah, and I can barely tell that that's done any sort of rendering whatsoever. And it's completed that job in one minute and 15 seconds. So not bad at all. If anyone wants that, I can make this archive available and you could just try running it on your own PC. Let me know down in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. So next one, last one, we're gonna hop into this. This is a review of my, it was a Fovitech light I did a review from. Now we're going to go to playback. We have no optimized media, no proxy again. The timeline proxy is off. Render cache though is on smart. I'm going to leave it on smart because it does have some effects going on here. Now, again, this is all 4K footage. There's a hell of a lot of it, as you can see. And this one is a full 4K timeline. We can scrub through. That's keeping up pretty well. Let's just pick on this point here and hit play. And there is no problem there at all either. Now this one has some actual color grading on it, some proper color grading. So if we go to the color tab, we use four nodes here. We use the first one just for some base adjustments, you know, temperature, that sort of thing. Second one was a few other minor adjustments and then some color wheel adjustments. The third one was a curve adjustment just to add contrast. And then the fourth one was a vignette. So we have got some color grading on there. And as I mentioned, it's a 4K timeline with 4K footage. Now at any point I can ripple delete that, everything on the timeline just works, it all just closes the gap with no real lag or struggle at all. If we turn the grade off, it looks like that, but it doesn't matter whether it's on or off, we still get that 25 frames per second with no real issues whatsoever. Uh, let's go to the beginning here. There is some this is a glitch effect, which is fusion. Now that is slow, that will chug because it's doing fusion effects on top of fusion effects because it's a fusion transition into a fusion text, so text plus. But again, it's rendering it relatively quickly. It's not the quickest thing in the world, but it is rendering that cache. So you leave that for a few minutes, it'll all be ready to go. We've got some more fusion here. So we've got an animated sidebar. It's nothing complicated, it's an animated rectangle with a drop shadow and a transform node where we just move everything out of the way. It's rendering it, it can't play that back in real time, but again, that's to be expected. My PC can't play that back in real time without rendering it. So it's nothing too horrendous there. I don't really have anything bad to say. So let's just pick this edit point here. We'll go into the effects library. We'll go to video transitions. We're gonna grab a uh, Resolve FX transition, we're gonna use the burn away one because that's actually doing some interesting stuff within Fusion. We're just gonna drop that straight on there, hit play, not give it a chance to do anything. Oh, it took a moment. Play again. And it's struggling, it's dropping some frames, but that's because it's rendering it. Couple of attempts third attempt and it's pretty much good to go. Yeah, couple of plays through. Again, it's probably still rendering. Yeah, it's still rendering the rest as well. So that rendered that transition while it was also rendering everything else at the beginning of the timeline, that sidebar, the text, the transitions, that sort of stuff. And honestly, I don't really know what else to say. It's quite good. <laughs> I have noticed if you start dropping some effects on things, things can start to go awry. So let's, again, this is a bit unfair because it's trying to render other stuff, but if we drop the CCTV effect onto this clip here and we hit play, it's dropping frames. It's running about eight to nine frames per second there. But again, you'd need to give that time to render. That'd be the same on most things. I do think, again, a fully spec PC of the same cost, you know, 
if you built a PC for 1200 quid, which is what this laptop cost, it would be faster. You can't take that with you, can you? So, now what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to knock this down to be 1080p. I said at the beginning I was going to stop the screen recording to do the renders, but I'm not going to bother. I'm this far in now. We're going to go to the render. I'm going to unplug. So we're now running on battery. Goodbye power. Ten eighty P H.264, all the other stuff, yada yada yada. Best quality, ten eighty P, twenty five frames. Again, lots of color grading on this, the whole thing's color graded, it's all four K footage. There's a fair bit of fusion and transitions, and we've just added this additional effect, all that sort of stuff. Add to the render key. We'll render that. Right, it's now warm. It's mildly warm to touch on the bottom. I want to say mildly warm, I mean mildly warm. If it was a cup of tea, it'd be cold, but it is mildly warm. And we are done. That took a total of seven minutes and 49 seconds for a project of that's color graded, loads of different clips, 4K and is a total of 11 minutes and 33 seconds long on a 1080p timeline and exported in H.264 at 1080p. Right, future Alex here. I re-rendered the exact same project but with the screen recorder turned off and it knocked almost a minute off. So that rendered out this time around in 6 minutes and 54 versus the 7 minutes and 49. So yeah, the screen recorder does take up quite a lot of power. So basically you can knock a significant amount off, but I'm glad I ran with the screen recorder so you could see it for yourself. Which also puts the fact that you can scrub through the timeline and do all that stuff in real time. It makes it look even more impressive when the screen recorder was using a significant amount of resources. There you go. So there you have it. There is the MacBook M1 with just eight gig of RAM smashing through an awful lot, actually, a surprising amount with surprising ease. And remember, this is just the first iteration of DaVinci Resolve 17.1. This is the first version they've ever made for the M1 chip. A lot of this may still be emulated, so it will probably get better over time. It might not. They may have fluked it and got perfect optimization on the first go. Who knows? I don't want to speculate too much, but a fair guess would be that they will improve the performance over time. But hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If there's anything you'd like to see any specific tests on the M1, please do let me know down in the comments and I'll do my best to do those for you. If you did enjoy the video though, thumbs up. Any comments or feedback, smash them down below. And if you're new here, you did enjoy the video, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button for me. Thanks ever so much for watching, folks. Take it easy. I'll see you next time. See ya.